Hey there, it's Antrees, and welcome to the Savvy Painter Podcast. This episode is sponsored by Traquel Art Supplies. Traquel offers sensibly priced art supplies conveniently shipped right to your door. For over 30 years, Traquel has been obsessed with the art of brush making. They've been testing and tweaking their brushes to get the perfect balance, flow, and snap. Go to Traquel.com and use promo code SAVVY16 to get 15% off your next order. This week, my guest is figurative painter Jennifer Balkin. Jennifer didn't start out to be an artist. She earned her PhD in anthropological sociology, but after seeing master paintings in France, Italy, and Spain, she knew she had to switch gears and study art. In this episode, Jennifer talks about how she transitioned into full-time painting. She talks about her experience with galleries, social media, looking out for yourself, and balancing painting life with family life. Jennifer offers tips on pushing yourself to be your best, determining which galleries to work with, and working through grief. She stresses the importance of both working hard to learn the language of painting and the joy of playful riffs and exploration. So here is Jennifer Balkin. Jennifer, thank you so much for being on the Savvy Painter podcast. My pleasure. I am honored to be here. Can you give us a little bit of background on how you got started and when you decided you wanted to dedicate yourself to to painting as your vocation? Yeah, I have kind of a weird background to what, what I'm doing now because I went to graduate school for sociology here in Austin, where I've been for a long time, and spent some time in Mexico getting my PhD in kind of anthropological sociology. And so it definitely was a bit of a circuitous path to getting where I am now, though I I had lots of really rich experiences doing that and being, you know, down in down in Mexico doing work was the highlight of all the stuff I studied. My heart was never really in it and I got turned on to painting soon thereafter I as a kid I drew a lot and my grandmother was a painter and I kind of played with some oil paints a long long time ago and took a couple of art classes in college and a studio class and just drew a lot in general and never really I don't know like just wasn't really exposed to the idea of being an artist at all and I took a trip to Europe, actually, to Western Europe by myself and saw just all these masterworks in, you know, all the very obvious, <laughs> obvious places in France and Italy and Spain. And, and at that moment, like, I realized I was so moved just to see some of these pieces in life for the first time. And um, anyway, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I want to paint. And I came home and started to paint. And never stopped, basically. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was like really compelling. I um I so by like oh five I quit my job and decided I just wanted to paint. I was um I like had been going to work, sitting in front of a computer in the morning, exhausted because I was staying up late painting. And um I think like my segue to just just going from like I'm just painting, whatever, painting around, um, to actually doing it for real was, um, I had decided to spend a month at the Denver art student league. I'd heard about it and, um, I totally had arts like art student envy though. I felt way too schooled and old to to do anything about it. So I like, at this point I had been going to life drawing sessions and stuff in in town and, uh, meeting some other artists and, or some artists. And, and, uh, I learned about, you know, some great painters teaching over there. And so I went for a month and it was like a good injection of some like really great training from some current painting masters, which ended up being somewhat of a springboard. And I came home and I'm like, all right, go, let me figure this out. So, so yeah. So, and I was so, I felt so passionate about it more than anything I had done done to that point. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Wow. And I know it was like, it's not your typical situation. Right. No, which is, well, I mean, it, it kind of is and it isn't in some ways. Like I think, you know, there is a lot of times that moment 
And I think there's probably more people than we realize who are, I don't know, it's kind of like you, you know, people will tend to really love the arts as a kid or through their teenage years. But, you know, at the at the point where they're making a decision about what they want to pursue in college, there's so much expectations placed on people. And then also, I think, you know, art traditionally just isn't like I, there's no other profession where people say, you know, you should have a backup. You know, if you're going to study art, right. maybe you should study law on the side or something else, you know, because the assumption is you're not going to be able to make it or there's a very good chance that that degree is not going to do it for you. And so people end up choosing something different or often what happens is they'll, you know, life happens, you have a family and people put the art aside until their kids are at an age where they could, you know, they're a little bit more self-contained and they go they go back to it but there's this like period of not doing not kind of following their dreams and then there's always something like that like what you just described where it's just like I have to do this this light bulb goes off yes that's so true and I used to think to myself well again I I fall into this sometimes I'm like all right stop don't you know I, I see these like super young painters and who are just kicking butt like they're just doing really good stuff and I'm like oh if only I had done that (laughs) when you know I was like their age and and I'm like that is so silly because it's what I did informed what I do now and you know I just you can't like I I, yeah yeah it's all it all cultivates whatever it is wherever you end up and um yeah yeah and it's I mean and this is great because um, <clears throat> like, I love this because I'm going to I'm going to start asking you a lot of questions about this because I know so many people write me about this. Like they're like they, you know, they say like the most some of the really, really common questions I get are, um, OK, well, you know, X, Y, Z happen. And I realize that, you know, I want to be an artist and um, and I want to make the transition to painting full time. How do I do that? And then also that like, is it too late for me? I am. And it can be anything like it can be I'm 35 years old. I'm 45 years old. I'm 60 years old. Is it too late for me? So um, just like as a segue from what you just said, when you have those moments when you're feeling like that, what it is, you know, like you, it's silly, but it's real. Like when you're feeling yes. that, it's so real. So can you talk a little bit about how you work your way through that? Um, I'm, I'm like, I'm happy to report that I don't really, it's like I used, I used to think that more. These days I'm like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm fairly, com- I've been doing this long enough that uh, I feel more com- comfortable and confident than I did say like five years ago even. Um, but, um, but the thing, you know, it's like so many, I don't know, I, I think with social media, like, you know, we all, all uh, those of us in the arts particularly have like a gazillion <laughs> virtual artist friends. And mm-hmm. so we, for better or for worse, are like, and, you know, aware of what everyone under the sun who makes art is doing. And it can be, you know, it's like you're comparing yourself to people, even if you don't want to <laughs> like so um and um and when i you know whenever i get into that that space i'm like okay you know why am i even doing this i'm i'm doing this because it fuels me and i'm you know i i I'm, i love it more than you know more than just anything and and i um i the 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 process of it okay i think i'm going off on a tangent now but <laughs> But, um, but it's actually, you know, just do, without thinking about what led me to this place, um, or anything before or after, like actually being in it and, and taking, you know, all my tools, what I've learned and adding my own voice is, is, you know, the most exciting thing about what it is, which is kind of related to. Okay, hold on, Trees. I think I just want, I don't even think I answered your question. <laughs> no, but I mean, I think what you're, I mean, <laughs> like what, what I'm hearing is that when you have those 
you know, when you were having those moments and that's so great to hear that they're, they're coming, you know, that for you, they're coming less and less and less. And I think that's, you know, part of building confidence as a painter. But, um, when you were having those moments, you sort of would go back to the, why do I paint in the first place instead of comparing yeah. yourself to other people? Yeah. Yes. And, um, and, and there's so, oh, I know what I was going to say, but there's, you know, like you alluded to, there's so many ways of getting here and, you know, you're talking about people. Okay. Now I remember <laughs> people at whatever age that feel like quote, too old, too old to get started on this new thing. And, um, you know, I, I know, gosh, a, a former student of mine, this like, wonderful man who, um, started, you know, super like accomplished in a bunch of stuff. Like the guy is a forensic psych, psychiatrist as well as a pilot like in his youth and now I know it's crazy now he's um up like close to 80 I think and he's had like a super full life and um he was diagnosed with cancer um in his 70s and very fortunately like beat it but while he was in the hospital like he decided somebody um gifted him like a a set of water watercolors i believe and a and a drawing pad and he just started making marks and left the hospital like or just kind of left that period wanting to do art and uh and it was just and i met him and he ended up taking a class from me and he was just like just the such an inspiring soul and really like made me realize like it is never too late to do anything that uh, that inspires you and um but you know as far as like you know, the real, like, okay, not that that is reality, but like, okay, am I too old to like get good at it? Cause that's really the bottom line. It's like, am I too old to do this for real or, you know, and I think like there's just, you know, you don't have to go to some quote, you know, I don't know, of uh, accredited art school. I mean, la- that life has changed dramatically in the mm. last years is all these ateliers that have popped up and, you know, there's so many places to, um, to get some good, um, instruction and, uh, and tools and then piece that together and work on your own. And, and, um, you know, just like, I mean, my, I just believe in, if you want to do it, you have to do it all the time. Um, Mm -hmm. like getting really great at your craft and that's really the bottom line. And, so yeah, pick it up whenever, you know, if you're serious, you can, you'll make it happen. And, I don't like I say that very sincerely because I really do believe it. Can you um, can you describe what was going on when you decided to quit your job and and paint full time? Like, I'm curious, like leading up to the actual day that you put your notice in and, and left the job. How were you feeling? Were you preparing for this? What was going on? Um, so it sort of wasn't like I had, I had quit this job, um, that at the, that moment I was, well, I worked at this one, excuse me, one job working for the state of Texas in water resources. And then I just, I just was not happy at any of these jobs. Um, so I wasn't there for very long. And then I worked for state demography office and, Part, I mean, part of it was that I, I, these were not my dream jobs related to really what I had studied anyway. Right. But I was just really unclear about what I wanted to do. And um, so anyway, um, I started, you know, I, when I started getting into painting was while I was at this that second job. And I, I don't know, I was, I was pretty unhappy and for a number of reasons, but you know, one being like, I, I don't want to be doing that and I want to paint. And it just all sounds so like crazy to me. <laughs> like, Oh, okay. You, you know, you, you, come on, you're a grown woman now and you have to make a living. Like you just can't yeah. just say, Hey, I want to paint. And, um, right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, <laughs> but fortunately, like my, uh, fortunately my husband is a, a very creative person. Um, he, you know, one of his, one of the things he does is uh, he is a great skilled musician. He plays, uh, plays guitar um, and uh, and studied um, in college uh, classical jazz guitar and doesn't do that 
full time. Um, but, uh, but anyway, he was very understanding of this, like this urge and need and, and, uh, I don't know, this dream that I was having, which seemed somewhat sudden, but, um, but it had been brewing for a little while. So what I had decided to, so I, I, I did quit that job, um, and decided that, well, okay, if I'm going to, uh, if I'm going to try to be, I don't know, to, to paint more, to be an artist, whatever that even looked like, um, I still need some, a little stable income. <laughs> so I had decided to get a part-time job and then just spend the rest of my hours, um, painting in some form. And, uh, and so I was, so, so it was sort of like a, like a transitioning basically. Mm-hmm. So, so that was really nice because I was making some money and, and able to paint. Um, and then eventually I let that go. Um, but I remember this feeling of like, I will do like, I don't know, I, whatever I, I'll do what I have to do in order to be able to paint. And, and my husband, Jeff, who was like really emotionally supportive and financially supportive at that time, I'm like, just hold my back now. And I promise I'll try to make it up to you. So, (laughs) so, um, so yeah, so he, you know, that was like really, really wonderful because we did own a house at that point and, you know, a mortgage has to be paid. So, um, <laughs> um yeah. So, and uh, I mean, those are, those are real concerns, right? And it, and it is, yes, it is intimidating. Indeed. Um, but, uh, but you know, the, you know, as so many artists can relate to like that burning desire to like, I've got to do this. I will, I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll figure out how to make it work. And, um, And when I went to, um, the art student league, you know, one of my thoughts is the, as like, I don't know, intimidating as it all sounded or even felt at the moment or before then I thought, you know, maybe one way I can make this work is I can teach someday if I'm like qualified at that point, Uh (laughs) I know enough stuff. Um, but, uh, so when I went to Denver, um, I, you know, I had that, like I just, I really, I thought to myself like, okay, I'm taking in like a lot of like great gems of information and, and, and like really good, really good teachers and just like really trying to, you know, like just internalize a lot, a lot of info for my own, my own benefit as well as like thinking like maybe someday I'll offer these, this information to other people, which is what happened uh-huh. um, down down the road so that I had that in mind and now I do that. So, um, so that, that, that worked out for me. Yeah. Can you talk? So, um, there's this learning period, right. That, that she went through, um, for example, going to the, to the Denver, I'm sorry, it's the Denver, (laughs) I'm not familiar with it. It's the Denver, um, art students league. Is that right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Want to make sure I wasn't getting it mixed up with the the New York version. <laughs> no, um, it definitely like definitely modeled itself after after the New York one. So, so you go through this period where you're studying with all these great artists, and then like, can you talk about the transition from you know like that that studying and learning period to I'm ready to show my work. Yes. Um, well, kind of like, interestingly, I, I started showing my work before that period. Um, I, you know, it's so funny. I don't know. I think like we all, I don't know, at least I do. I look back at my early work. I'm like, Oh my God, I can't believe I put that on the wall. Um, (laughs) all the time. (laughs) Yeah. I I do it like all actually all the time. I do it now. Um, Yeah. But but it uh, just shows how much you've grown. Yeah. And I, I, yes, I think that's a good thing. Cause you're just, you know, if you're constantly pushing yourself and learning and yeah, that's, it's like, it's a lifetime. Um, but, um, I, um, let's say in, I guess it was an O three. I, um, I made a couple of, it's funny cause I, I did a, I did two self portraits and, um, this is while I was still, I don't know, working at it, trying to figure it out. Um, but, uh, I ended up 
um, hanging them in this, in like this art event, um, in Austin and a, a, a painter friend, a guy named Charles Randolph is a wonderful person, really a painter. I totally admired, um, here in Austin who doesn't live here anymore, but, uh, but he saw them and he encouraged me to go talk to a local gallery. And I was like, Oh my gosh, like Charles liked these, they <laughs> must be worth something. Um, <laughs> and so, um, you know, I'll always like, remember that, the, that, that experience. And it's funny at the time, um, I really feel, I felt like, like looking back at making those paintings, I like was just winging it, just winging everything. I, you know, just trying to like mix some color up until I I struck something, you know, and, and, but they, they were okay. Um, I'm like, okay, they looked like what I had hoped they looked like. So Mm -hmm. that is okay. And and they got some good response. And so I ended up, um, uh, with like the, the emotional support of my friend, um, went and approached a local gallery and they were interested. And, and so I had a show, um, I guess it was, uh, maybe like a year later at this gallery. And, um, and so, you know, that was like super, super exciting. Um, and the gallery owner, like offered, you know, he told me a number of, how many pieces that he was hoping from me and I just got it together and put together a show. Um, so I guess that was like my first, my first, uh, professional experience. Um, Gosh, have I learned a lot from them, but from since that time, as far as like, just, I don't know, that whole course of events, um, I was so green and, (laughs) and just willing to do anything. I got it. I just, yeah. Um, what were some of the, um, sort of, no, nothing. I don't know. Just feeling like just taking a little advantage of, but I, without going into any morbid detail, but, um, just kind of the, the, the kind of stuff that like, when you're, you're just so excited that somebody wants to hang your work, you're like, whatever, just take it. And you know, anyway, (laughs) do you now use different criteria to decide where you're going to show your work? Yeah. Yes. I, um, having had like a pretty rough experience a couple of years ago with a reputable quote, a quote, reputable gallery. I'm, I'm much, I don't know, much more reserved, I think, <laughs> as far as, um, my, you know, my, my quickness to get involved with the gallery. Um, so yeah, that was, um, yeah, that was uh, this great place. I was super, super excited a couple of years ago. They wanted to show my work and then later offered me a two person show. And I was like beside myself. I'm like, Oh my God, New York city. Wow. This is awesome. And, um, and yeah, um, got it all together, did it. And then like a couple months later, they abruptly closed with no notice. And, um, and with my, you know, some of my paintings in there, my money that they owed me. And I know there's a lot of, you know, a lot of details like that. When yeah. You that it's to, unfortunately, um, it is not it's, unheard it's, of. It's, totally, you know, like really great people show there. And I, you know, I, I just, I thought, Oh, okay. You know, there's like, I, this is a, this is a good, this is good. This is just going to be just fine. And, um, and then it wasn't. And so it really, uh, <laughs> but what kind um, of, um, kind of action steps or what, what did you take away from that that you could share with, you know, like other people who are looking to show their work? Um, you know, who um, are kind of at that stage that you were, you know, five years ago. Um, I, I mean, well, my, my, what I had, what's interesting is that what I, well, what, what I always do now, which I didn't think I needed to do in this particular space because there were such prominent people that were hanging there. So, but I always contact artists. Um, you know, if a yes. gallery is interested in your work, I like, you know, it is imperative that you contact a few of the artists on the roster. Absolutely. And, well, like one-to-one about their experience. They get paid on time, you know, all that like stuff is your, you know, how often is your work on the walls and, and so kind of just vetting, vetting them a bit. Um, but, uh, but as far as like, you know, um, my, my, my own personal takeaway from that whole thing was that, you know, okay, I just need to 
focus inward for a while and just do the best work I, I can do, not worry about galleries at all. Um, and, uh, I, you know, and just kind of see what, just, just focus on my work and, um, and hopefully people will respond to it. Um, and, uh, I mean, frankly, like with all, you know, social media, it makes, makes sharing work very easy. And mm-hmm. so, you know, it's such a different world we live in now than, than even five years ago. Um, uh, you know, c- collectors are, can interact directly with an artist. And, um, so anyway, I just, uh, yeah, I, that was kind of my attitude for a little while. And I was really, I felt really burned and pretty depressed about it. And then, um, uh, you know, we've got a big local event here in Austin called the East Austin Studio Tour, which is actually coming up in November. But um, it was all around that time a few years ago. And I was just I'm like, OK, I'm just going to focus on making some good work for my art tour and not thinking about anything else. And um, and that's what I did. And and um, I got some great responses. And then, you know, little little by little, like opportunities started coming my way and uh which felt good after feeling pretty deflated for a little while so I guess like so that was you know for me I'm just like you know I don't have I have to just be more self-reliant and I think that kind of is the state of affairs in general Mm -hmm. um for these days um we like we actually have to be good business people too (laughs) shocking (laughs) No, I like at at one time we, you know, it was just kind of like, oh, if you're lucky, if you have a couple of galleries, just send them work and that'll be that. Um, But no, like now you just, I mean, you have to have your eggs and a number of baskets and, um, uh, you know, depending, like, you know, for me, I I teach some, I do some commissions. um, Yeah. And also do, you know, do my own stuff. And, and I've, been doing more group shows and um so just a little little bit here and there and kind of make it all work somehow yeah yeah which is which is I think super important to I mean you have to take care of yourself and nobody's going to do it for you (laughs) It's such a simple statement and seems so obvious, but always having that in mind and looking out for your best interest, it doesn't make you selfish. Yeah. You know, and there's like, I'm really fortunate here in Austin to be part of like a very supportive figurative painting community and we paint together, you know, a few of us and we get models and we also just sort of bounce ideas off of each other and constantly talk about how there's no, (laughs) there's no model like for what we do. I mean, model of a template or anything like that, you know, this is how to do it. You got to promote yourself. You got, you know, you've, you've got to truly, like you said, take care of yourself because, uh, nobody else is doing it. (laughs) Nobody, you know, it's so weird. Like, you know, I'm in my studio every day and not once has somebody come knocking on my door and said, how can I help you sell your art? And (laughs) by the way, I want that one, that one, and that one. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> Unless it's an email from, you know, um, I don't know, Nigeria or like, <laughs> like, yes, you're, uh, the man who, who notices his wife's been looking at your website. Oh my God. Like that email All again. The time. Oh my God. That one's so, <laughs> that one is so funny. Cause I get that like at least like once or twice a week, but it's, and, and he talks about how much, you know, like, yeah, she left the web page open and I love your work and blah, 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 blah. And the only thing is he's talking about the Savvy Painter website. Not There's not a, one single piece of mine. I'm maybe like there was one episode I did where I put my work up, but it's all other people's work. And I'm just like, I always want to reply and just mess with them <laughs> or her or whoever it is. <laughs> like like I get that like you know and that they send out a gazillion because yeah. they send out a gazillion some um unfortunately somebody out there is gonna fall for it and yeah it's yeah. just like I, I have responded back very negatively and yeah I just it doesn't even matter do they respond back well I um I'm not gonna say I fell for it but I like the very first one I got which was like a couple of years ago I was like huh like the wording did not was, there were no flag, like yellow flags yet. And so I actually communicated with 
him, her, him, whatever, for a couple of emails before I was like, oh, well, which pieces? And they responded and asked me like the right questions. And it was very weird. And then eventually I'm like, uh, something does not, you know, yeah, <laughs> the spider smell right here, are so. going off. <laughs> right, right, right. Totally. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. But yeah, we're like victims of not saying that like, you know, people in other industries are, but it's like, oh my gosh, they're preying on us. They're preying on us like poor little artists. We're all by ourselves and <laughs> like just trying to live in here. Get, the, get, us. Oh get away. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Turkel Art Supplies. I spoke with Courtney Bridges, who heads the marketing department over at Turkel, and I asked her which social media platform is most effective for artists. Here's what she had to say. We only use Facebook and Instagram and a little bit of YouTube. Definitely would say that Instagram now is where artists should be just because there's not a lot of distractions like there is on Facebook. You know, they can post a picture of their art and that's the first thing you're going to see. And then if you're interested in it, you can go through and read what they have to say about it. You know, put, go to their profile and it's just pictures of all their art. I think Facebook's become overran with lots of ads and distractions and it takes away from what artists are trying to get across. Turkel offers sensibly priced art supplies conveniently shipped to your door. Go to turkel.com and use promo code SAVVY16 to get 15% off of your next order. I love this question because I think it really helps people see that, like, you know, not everything is unicorns and ponies and the Facebook perception that we get when we look at other people's Facebook pages. We tend to think the grass is greener and they're doing so much better than we are, um, which is rarely true. <laughs> so with that in mind, can you share a story of a time in your journey when you encountered a, a setback or experienced um, a particularly big challenge? Uh, but most importantly, what did you take away from that experience? Well, definitely that that New York City situation oh, God, um, yeah. was probably like some of the worst. Um you know, I've had a um, when a couple paintings of mine disappeared in New Orleans. You know, it's like uh, unfortunately, much of this stuff is gallery related, um, and so you know, I don't, I don't know. That's just an- another one of which I'm, yeah, closed, closed up shop, and there my paintings were, and I could not. I had no recourse. Um, on a more personal level, I lost. Um, one of my best friends who was a painter and an inspiration to me. And uh, he died last year, a little over a year ago, too, too young from cancer. And, uh, and he, that uh, was just a terrible time. Um, but uh, he was like, I'm, I remember I met him at a life drawing session when I was just kind of getting started. And, uh, and he was just my friend Pablo and such a, such an exceptional person, a human being, and, uh, and, you know, a bit older than me, and was just always, like, my, he always had good advice for me, and just, was just such a dear friend, he, we ended up being studio mates for a while, I mean, it was, like, clearly on this journey together, um, even though he was older than me, and had, you know, quite a bit more art experience than I did. And we um, parted ways from studio mates, basically, because I had a kid. Um, And that was uh, seven years ago when I moved out from our shared space and then made my own space where I live. But uh, anyway, um, man, when Pablo died, I mean, like pretty much like up until he passed away, you know, we were painting together in in groups and just hanging around, hanging, hanging, like just hanging, shooting the stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can say it. It's okay. <laughs> um, NPR or wherever. Um, the shit. Uh, but, uh, just, yeah. Like we just talk about everything, art, philosophy, life. Like he was such an inspiration to me and, um, and then he died and, um, and I, I had this feeling of like, wow, I'm alone now. It's very weird. I mean, I, I, you know, I have, um, good friends and my husband and my son. And, but I felt like when I started my art path, Pablo was there for me and, oh my gosh, I'm going to start crying. <sighs> um, uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and I like, you know, the various I've had, I've had a good, good couple of years art wise and have gotten some good attention and 
people liking my work and stuff. And I've, you know, I, I used to I think like, Oh, Pablo would be proud of me. And <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. yeah. So I just kind of just like working through that. And, you know, I, not too long ago, I got an, an email from somebody who listens to the podcast and he's really, I mean, it's, it's very recent. He's really struggling with even going into his studio because, um, you know, the same thing happened. His studio mate passed away and, um, it's just so hard, you know, I can't imagine like going back in, you know, like everything there, of course, reminds you of that person and, and you're dealing with this grief and trying to be creative. And I know like you guys weren't, um, you know, had already, uh, I don't know, parted ways sounds like there was <laughs> something bad happened, but you're already like not painting in the same, in the same yeah, place. We- so it's not like walking in and seeing the empty chair, but that grief is, is real. And it takes, it takes time. It takes time to, to get through it. But I guess, you know, the, the beautiful thing is always knowing that that person's with you. Indeed. Definitely. Definitely. And, you know, and I mean, just to like, he would want me to paint, paint harder than I've ever painted. So, yes. you know, it was like painting. I, I really feel like I, you know, he left this planet too early and he had, he had, he had a lot more paintings to paint. And so, you know, I'm just like, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm painting with you, Pablo. And, <laughs> <laughs> those paintings for me and so yeah i'm taking the torch and and carrying it forward for exactly. you <laughs> <laughs> which is a beautiful way to honor that person yeah i'm sorry i have i didn't like oh, no, i didn't actually i didn't even expect to talk about pablo today just inspired to anyway <laughs> Linda Rendell, actually, one of the listeners of the podcast, uh, suggested that I talk to you. And she had a question for you. She wanted to know, what what is your biggest challenge when it comes to balancing your home and personal life and with your creative life? And how do you, um, what are some of the ways that you manage that? How do you overcome that challenge? Well, first, thank you, Linda, out there. I so appreciate you recommending me. <laughs> awesome. Um, um, I, ma- I imagine Linda probably has a kid or kids and family, and she knows I do too because I yeah. do talk about my in my public world. Um, for me, I it got easier. Like the transition was really difficult first. Um, my boy's now seven, and um, like many of us who are, are work full time as artists, like I went just from painting whenever I wanted to, whenever the, I mean, I I kept like fairly quote regular hours. I painted a lot, but you know, I did. That's all I really needed to think about, and um, and then um baby came along and interestingly enough interestingly I guess this is biology and what's supposed to happen it's funny before my son was born even when I was like very like fully pregnant um I kept thinking to myself like oh yeah having a baby but you know I'm still gonna do my painting thing and I'll just like strap them on my back and in front of my easel and (laughs) just continue as I as I am like nothing ever happened. I just like nothing ever happened except like he's going to be around. (laughs) It's so funny. Do you have kids? No. (laughs) Oh my God. It's like, it's such a crazy, like, I'm like, Oh my God. Cause you just, you have no idea. And so you just think from that perspective that you have at that moment. And anyway, he was born and like, obviously my world was, you know, turned around in many ways. And, um, after having him, I was like all of my creative energy went into having him and then then he was with me and and I had no desire to paint like it was bizarre the first time since I started painting I didn't have I had no thoughts I I had no inspiration (laughs) I had like I didn't even know I would have would I just had no desire and like it was you know that lasted for a little while like um and I thought, wow, this is kind of sad, but maybe I'm done. Maybe I said all there is to say for me and, uh-huh. you know, moving on. I, I, and it, which how, was, long, how long did that last? It actually, I mean, it seemed like a life. <laughs> yeah, because it's, I mean, like a, it, it could be a month and that to me would seem like forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it lasted for about half a year. Uh-huh. Um, 
And so, and I, and I, you know, and like, it's like, oh, well, of course it's like nature's way of making sure that we don't abandon our children. Like, it's like <laughs> <laughs> Also why they are just so darn cute. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Like hormones. Hello. And just, yeah, everything, like all that stuff. Like I didn't know anything about before having him. I just thought life would go on as it was. And, uh-huh. um, so, and then I don't know about like six months or so, you know, in, after having him, I thought, oh, I probably, I don't know, that, that art thing I used to do. <laughs> Should get back and, to um, that. and so I hired, you know, I hired like a, a, a sitter to be with him for a couple of days a week. And I would, which was really hard for me psychologically just to let, to leave him. Um, yeah. but even if I, I was going into my backyard to paint and <laughs> still like, but, um, but so, cause my studio is in my, in my backyard. Um, but I would go back there and I was just like, I don't know what to do with myself, uh, picking up like pencils and I'll just draw a little bit. And it was all very awkward. Um, but eventually I you're like, Oh yeah. Okay. This is what I do. And then like, you know, soon thereafter, like I'm full force back into it. Um, and, and my son Carlo is, you know, now going, or, you know, then when he was a couple of years old, um, he was doing a part-time daycare. And it was, it was interesting because I had, you know, I had gone from painting every day to now very structured painting. Like, yeah. okay, he's in, he's in this, um, pre, you know, preschool daycare place two days a week, two full days. So those are the days that I will paint. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and yes, and it was very weird, especially when like you're, you, you know, you like to paint wet on wet and like, no, sorry, you can't do that anymore. Um, so that's just, you just do some, you know, just adapt basically. And so I did. And, and then I added another day, um, a year later and he was going three days a week. So he was doing that up until kindergarten. And so I was very much like an every other day painter, mm-hmm. which I got like at first, you know, years ago, it would have been like, Oh my gosh, that's not enough time. But I became incredibly productive in the, in that time. You know what that is? I mean, I, I love to ask this questions because I think there's this, you know, there's this myth out there that if you're a parent, you can't be a great painter. Um, but the, like, I've asked this question so many times and that is the thing that, that I find most fascinating about it is there's this fear that if you have kids that your painting life is over. But if you look at what actually happens, um, at least with, you know, the people that I've, I've talked to with the artists that I've talked to when I asked them how, you know, like how did having children change your life? It mm-hmm. seems to make people much more disciplined and focused in the time that they have. And they actually end up getting more done than they did before, because before they had sort of theoretically an infinite amount of time, like there wasn't, you know, like worst case they (laughs) they lost sleep or they um you know didn't make it to work on time which you know i mean you could argue that's important but that's not the same thing as as a child right 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 um yeah i mean it's it's sort of akin to like i mean it's akin to having a deadline really you know i mean there are some i mean i'm actually not one of these people and i'm i'm glad i mean i'm not saying either way is better, but I am fairly, I've always just been fairly self-motivated. So I don't necessarily need some looming deadline to make me paint. Cause I know people like that, like they just can't paint until, <laughs> but, um, but having said that, like I, you know, it's like when you only have X number of hours, I mean, yeah, it's sort of, I don't know. I, it's funny because it's like, it's a very unromantic way to think about painting, but I think it's like much more realistic. Um, I used to get irritated by the, like the lay people, I guess, like the, not, the non artist people, the, you know, I have many friends who are not artists and stuff and they'd be like, Oh, it must be nice. You're just like relaxing. And when the muse hits, like, I'm like, what I'm sitting, sitting back, like at 11 a.m. drinking a glass of wine like I know right. <laughs> with my black like, beret and my black and white striped know, shirt exactly. on my feet like, up like I'm working my butt off like give me a break um but, but I mean that's what people think they just like 
you know, they think that it's just like this, I don't know, this like very kind of laissez-faire, just chilling, not, you know, carefree life. And I don't know. Yeah. I mean, even like when, when you, and all, all like, you know, some of the old masters, you know, like they, they, they struggle so much. Like, I don't know, for some, I don't know, yet this myth re- prevails. <laughs> I know. I don't know where that comes. I mean, <laughs> I don't I don't get it because to me artists are some of the the hardest working people I can imagine because you're you're doing everything. I mean you're 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 coming up with the concepts, you're creating the work, you're you're creating something that um you don't even know for a fact that it's going to it's going to sell when you're spending like a week or a month or however long to create this thing and then you're doing the marketing, you're doing this, you're doing that and you're putting up with all these these stereotypes of like oh, it's so nice to just be able to waltz into your studio whenever you want and work whenever you want and wow, what a lovely life you have. I know. Yep, exactly. Um, (laughs) But um, anyway, current day, getting back to Linda's question or answering it, trying to answer it um, uh, as the best I can um, is, you know, my, my kiddo, I've got one, one child and he's in school. And um, when he's at school, I am working, I am like really maximizing my time. And, uh, and I don't, you know, I, I used to, before, before he came around, um, I painted on weekends too. And I pretty much don't, um, I like really, you know, no matter, no matter what, even if I'm obsessing about something, I, (laughs) a painting that is, um, I have to like really make sure that my weekend time is my family time. And, um, and having said that on weeknights after my kid goes to bed, I will often go back into my studio and, tool around on something I'm working on. Um, my husband makes fun of me for that. Um, I just, I I like, I'll, I'm, I just get obsessed and I can't, I can't rest if something is not working. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, Oh no, those marks, the value is too light and it's not working, blah, blah, blah. So, um, anyway, I must fix. (laughs) Yeah. So yes. Nice. Can you um, can you share what you're working on? Speaking of that obsession, what are you working on right now, or what are you currently obsessed with? Um. So I'm. I think I'm constantly obsessed with this like line between abstraction and representationalism uh-huh. that I I strive to get there, and sometimes I hit it, and often I don't, and um, I've been, uh, lately I've been doing, a, I've just like kind of gotten a host of commissions and I, um, I used to not like them and I, uh, I hadn't done that any in a while. Um, the reason I, I mean, I liked them because it was nice to get paid for something, but, um, but, um, I, I, there just was very little flexibility mm-hmm. and, um, so didn't, didn't do them for a while and, and got to the point where I didn't feel like I totally needed to. Um, but, uh, and then last year, a big one, like giant portrait of a man came my way and it was really like, it was a really positive experience. Um, he was a, you know, he was very easy to work with and, um, and gave me a lot of freedom. And then since then I've gotten a few more that have been like that. And, I, so I've taken them on and, um, d- uh, and I think, I think just cause I'm like, my painting is better than it was, you know, five years ago. So people, I guess, trust me more <laughs> to just uh-huh. do, um, and so, uh, so Were these, um, just out of curiosity. So you had that one commission that sounds like was, you know, almost a dream client it was like a really great experience. Did, yes. did the ones that follow come out of that? Like, were they, um, you know, a lot of times people say, we will see something and yeah. say, you know, that actually, no, they're all, they've all been independent, um, independently of each other. And, uh, interestingly enough, and, um, and, um, and so, 
Yeah, so just there, just from various places, people have seen my work somewhere, or they know me. They've known me for a while. A couple of local people, and um, but uh, but what's been really like super great is that you know, as so long as I paint them to look like the way they look, <laughs> which is actually just fine with me because I'm like obsessed about likeness. And so in my, in my broad brushed way, um, like I want, you know, I, I want to use the minimal or, you know, I, I okay, I say minimal. Um, I want it to look like that. I mean, frankly, if it's not going right, I, there's a gazillion strokes in there, but, <laughs> but, but it's like sort of the impression that it's, you know, um, broadly done. I mean, I'm, that's what I'm, what I've, what I'm going for. Sometimes they're more successful than others, but, uh, but get the likeness of the person and then kind of riff on that, which, um, is my most joyous thing. Like once I get, I get that person in there, then I can kind of float a little flo- yeah. and, and, and clients have enjoyed this, which is like super. Cause I feel like, Oh wow, cool. This is like my painting. I mean, this is not just like tailored to exactly for what somebody else asked me to do. So, um, so those have been happening and I've been really enjoying them. Um, and, um, and then, you know, trying to get some of my own, own ideas going. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know what my next big thing is yet. I've got like some ideas that I'm poking around, but it's definitely, it, it's, it's, it's definitely me trying to get more abstract. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so, which is, you know, I, I feel like in my own world, like my own immediate, I guess, headspace, I, this is just this continuum that floats, it floats around and, and yeah, it's, but that, that explore, that exploration, that stage where you're just, um, playing Mm -hmm. is so much fun. And, and it can be, especially when you don't put, um, a lot of expectations on the results and you just allow the yourself to enjoy the process. I think that's when, um, a lot of really cool stuff happens. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And, um, I can be a little bit of a control freak. Um, Uh and it's kind of like letting submitting, like letting go to what may happen when I just throw a bunch of oil on a painting and see where the drips go and kind of (laughs) <laughs> like grit my teeth to make sure they don't obscure something that I thought was good. Like, <laughs> like oh my God, what's going to happen? And, and so, <laughs> That's so much which fun is, though. Which is fun. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So last question, can you describe a single habit that you strongly believe contributes to your success or growth as an artist? Um, paint I paint as much as I can which I want to do so it's not like I don't know I'm not like forcing myself to do it right it's not hard (laughs) Um, yeah yeah and I paint from life whenever I can um you know I work I work a lot from photos um but I also paint from life and I really feel like it it really helps my my work and um yeah and it um and it helps me it's kind of, I, um, I was thinking about something that, uh, I don't know as, you know, as a, as a representational painter, um, for the most part, we learn to paint what we see, not what we know, you know, like when you're uh-huh. like really trying to nail the values right. And, um, and, and, you know, I talk about that in my classes when I'm, when I'm teaching this stuff, but at some point, I feel like um, what, what I've been moving into, which is really exciting, is that like that I'm not – I don't want to be a slave to reality. I mean I, I do want to paint a thing that kind of looks like a thing, <laughs> the <laughs> thing I should say. But I want I, – I want, I want to paint what I don't see too. And so I feel like – I don't know. I feel like it's kind of like, like experimental jazz or something like that where uh-huh. – where, yeah. You have to learn the language um, in order to be able to, 
I don't know, like move away from it. Yeah. And, and so I've been working really hard over the years to learn the language. And I feel like, okay, I kind of know the language. Um, I'm, all, I'm still, you know, still working at it. But, but now I can like take those tools and like set them in, you know, set them concretely and then just like play and riff and just go off. But in some, in, in a way that makes sense. It, so it's like not haphazardly, but there is design element that and composition that makes sense. And so painting from life whenever I can really, really helps me yeah. to be freer. Music and art are so intertwined, you know. Um, so I love that you're you're talking about getting a, a solid foundation in and then allowing yourself to riff. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I think when I was younger, I definitely had musician envy. And <laughs> Finally, I realized like, hey, the paintbrush, that's my instrument. And that's okay. <laughs> yeah. And there's so I mean, like, the analogy just goes on and on and on. You can sit there and riff, you can have like a cool jam session. And you know, within your breaststrokes and your colors, you need moments of calm and you need silence. And then you need to just like, bang the drums, <laughs> and create something really, like, you know, within a given painting, just as in a given song, you need all of those pieces for it to work. So um, I love yes. that. <laughs> totally. And with that, I like to use music as an analogy too, when I or a metaphor when I, when I talk to people about this. With painting, some people will often say, oh, well, artists are just born with that. Like, I mean, people who can, who can you know, who are doing impressive, good yeah. work, they just have it. They just have it. You know, I always argue that, no, actually, you have to learn. Like, like you can't just pick up a guitar or, or get on the piano and start making melodies. Right. You have to learn to do that. And um, there's a disconnect, I think, like intuitively with people who really don't know much about painting that these things are not learned per se. And, right. um, and so I think like we are born with a propensity to want to do something and, you know, with certain – quote, I don't know, talent is a weird word, but a desire, a commitment, you know, an ability that with all of that a motivation. And um, yeah, and so I like I like talking about music because people get that. It's like, right. oh, I can't I can't just pick up a guitar and and do something that makes sense and anybody wants to listen to it. Like, but I can't I can't do that with a paintbrush either. And I and I'm I'm a little like sometimes I feel like a jerk by saying that because you know, I don't know. I feel like even with that, with abstract art, like, oh, it's abstract, whatever. I'm just like throwing some paint down. Like, yeah. right. And but Please. then that's, that's kind of like, you know, me when I was five walking up to our piano and pounding the keys and, and really believing that I was making some amazing music at that moment. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of the house was running for the hills. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And so, yeah. And I think, you know, anyway, there's, yeah, no, I, it, and it makes, total, I mean, I think, you know, my personal take on that is when it, when it comes down to it, you know, consistent, disciplined practice beats talent, the quote unquote talent, a million to one, like you can have somebody that maybe two people who start out painting music, whatever, one has more natural talent for it. Mm -hmm. But if that person has the talent, and they don't put in the time to practice their scales or really learn the craft, um, then the person who's consistently dedicated practicing their own craft is going to outrun that person like really, really quickly. Indeed. And I think they're going to have less troubles, you know, because they're not weighted down by this idea that they're a talented person. And so, you know, when they bomb a painting that suddenly rocks their world and makes them feel like, you know, like... <laughs> I'm a terrible person. Like, I, maybe I'm not talented. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe this is all a sham. Oh, my God, what do I do? Whereas, you know, the person who's really consistently dedicated to their practice is just kind of like, huh, I blew that one. What can I take away from that? Let's move on to the next one. Right, right, right. No, that's, that's a great way of putting it. Yes, you want to paint? Just do it all the time. <laughs> I love it. There you go. <laughs> Jennifer, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. I really enjoyed our conversation. Me too. Such a pleasure. That was a lot of fun. Good. I want to thank Jennifer again for sharing so much of herself with us. 
Jennifer has a couple of shows coming up in December in Denver, Colorado, and San Antonio, Texas. So if you are in either area, I encourage you to go check them out. You can see Jennifer's paintings and connect with her on social media by going to SavvyPainter.com forward slash podcast forward slash Jennifer Balkan, or just go to SavvyPainter.com and click on the podcast tab and you'll see her episode right there. And while you're at SavvyPainter.com, subscribe to the Savvy Painter email list. You get access to free guides and downloads like the Essential Tips for Artists, Volume 1. It's a compilation of quotes from past episodes of the podcast. You can also get access to how to critique your own paintings. It's a special tip sheet to help you push past roadblocks in your paintings. These are both available free when you join the email list, along with several other downloads and guides. Next week, I will be talking with Parker Stremmel. Parker is a gallery manager at Stremmel Gallery in Reno, Nevada. We had a fabulous conversation Um, I think you're going to love it. We talk about approaching galleries, some of the mistakes artists make when doing that, and some of the better ways that you can present yourself when you go to a gallery. So until next week, this is Antrice Wood with the Savvy Painter Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. 